Good morning. Uh, my name is Kevin Stewart, K-E-V-I-N-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. I thank the hearing panel for your work work here today. I'll provide you with my full comments in writing. I'm Kevin Stewart. I am D Director of Environmental Health for the American Lung Association in Mid-Atlantic, and I am here today representing not only the three million people in our four state service area who suffer from chronic lung disease, but also the tens of millions more who desire to breathe clean air and so protect their good health. The American Lung Association of the Mid-Atlantic is pleased that, pursuant to the requirements of the Clean Air Act, the Environmental Protection Agency has proposed a new set of national standards to reduce the amount of ozone smog forming VOCs, volatile organic compounds, air toxics, hazardous, organic, hazardous air pollutants, or HAPs, and methane that are released from production wells, processing plants, transmission pipelines, and storage units within the oil and natural gas industries. We are here today to put three main messages into the record. We support EPA's proposal to reduce the oil and natural gas sector emissions, a proposal that includes the first and much needed federal air standards for hydraulically fractured wells. We urge EPA to strengthen these rules to further reduce the emissions of these pollutants, and we will describe several specific ways of doing so. And finally, our purpose is to remind everyone about the reason why we advocate for these measures. Public health is, ex is at stake. The American Lung Association is looking forward to the implementation of these standards that will protect Americans across the country from harmful air pollutants, including VOCs, air toxics, ozone, and particulate matter, or PM. Not only will the standards help reduce ozone and PM levels in areas where oil and gas production occurs, but they will contribute to downwind attainment of ambient air quality standards for these pollutants. The standards will reduce the risks from exposure to benzene, benzene, a class A known human carcinogen, and other harmful air toxics that affect numerous organs and body systems. The standards will reduce exposure to sulfur dioxide and its role as a component of fine particle pollution. And though the standards do not directly target methane, our understanding is that they will result in an annual methane reduction of 3.4 million tons, about 26%, and this is good progress. Furthermore, according to the EPA, industry-wide implementation of this rule in the United States would amount to a reduction by 25%, or 540,000 tons of VOCs, and by nearly 30%, or 38,000 tons of HAPs. We observe that the proposed rules are so cost-effective that not only do they provide some protections to human health and air quality, but they also will help the industry conserve so much product currently released or flared off that an annual net savings of 30 to 45 million dollars is expected to result. Indeed, given that kind of arithmetic, the industry should already be taking these kinds of pollution reduction steps of its own accord, doing them out of its own self-interest, rather than needing the government's encouragement in the form of this rule to nudge it along. We also recognize that there are several instances in which the industry has failed adequately to characterize emissions or to address potential releases exposures and health risks. And for example, the American Lung Association in Pennsylvania is on record as supporting the prompt establishment of a complete and reliable emissions inventory with respect to the burgeoning Marcellus gas industry in that state. And in the absence of such an inventory and without the implementation of the proposed rule, comparisons with existing data associated with the Barnett play in Texas, taken together with anticipated projections for expanded development of this resource in Pennsylvania, appear to lead to a ballpark approximation of on the order of 200,000 tons per year total annual emissions of nitrogen oxides and VOCs by the year 2020. And therefore, the American Lung Association of the Mid-Atlantic believes that there is an unmet need for the industry to make a further investment in public health, and hence urges the EPA to strengthen these rules to further reduce the emissions of these pollutants. Specifically, we recommend that EPA require cleanup of both new and existing sources, not just new ones, especially compressors and gas-driven controllers and valves, set standards for the reduction of methane, regulating it directly and not merely as a consequence of the reduction of VOCs. And uh, given that EPA itself notes that volatilization from produced water ponds are a potentially significant source of emissions, we recommend the elimination of open pit wastewater storage. We also recommend that EPA require sufficient monitoring and adequately detailed reporting of emissions to inform affected communities of their air quality and to support enforcement of performance and emission standards. 
establish a third party verification system that ensures independence and reliability of funding. Ensure that affirmative act defense criteria do not unjustly close or impede the means of recourse available to parties claiming harm or undue exposure. Provide incentives that encourage and reinforce good behavior, disincentives for irresponsible operators, significant compliance assistance to operators that have need of improvement and demonstrate a commitment to improve their operations and adequate resources for enforcing the rule. And finally, we emphasize that the populations potentially at risk in our service territory are constituted of groups containing hundreds of thousands or even millions of individuals. Can Mr. Stewart, can I ask you this? Wrap up your text. Yes, sir. And indeed, from far from being a small minority, persons falling into one or more of these high-risk groups together comprise more than half the population. And even more important to remember, every one of these millions is a real person, not a nameless statistic. Every one of these people is a human being worthy of our attention, a neighbor, a coworker, a friend, a family member, maybe even yourself. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Peter Ray, and I am chair of the Conservation Committee of the Allegheny Group of the Sierra Club. Centered in Pittsburgh, the Allegheny Group has 5,200 members in Western Pennsylvania. First, I would like to say how appropriate it is for the EPA to decide to hold one of its only three national hearings here in Western Pennsylvania. We are thankful to the EPA for that decision, for not only does this region have a remarkable record of battling air pollution, but it is now facing a fresh threat of air pollution from the production and distribution of deep shale natural gas. It is also most appropriate for the EPA to be paying attention at this time to the quality of air around the facilities used to produce and distribute deep shale gas. Clearly, the explosion of drilling in the Marcellus Plain here in Pennsylvania is occurring too rapidly for its own good. More than 3,000 wells have been drilled without a full understanding of how the practice of hydraulic fracturing is affecting the quality of our drinking water. In that regard, we are pleased to see that EPA is currently assessing the potential of groundwater contamination due to shale gas drilling. In addition to concern over drinking water contamination, we are also concerned about how the, how the rapid growth of shale gas industry could affect the quality of our air. As the EPA staff already knows, the air quality region was not up to standard even prior to shale gas drilling. There are a number of sulfur dioxide non-attainment areas and sulfur dioxide maintenance areas in the region. And for ozone, the Pittsburgh Beaver Valley area with close to two and a half million people was classified as subpar with the city of Pittsburgh being ranked as 19th in the nation for smog pollution in 2010. It is reasonable to assume that unless standards are set and maintained for the shale gas industry, we can expect air pollution related health problems in our region to be severely aggra aggravated. Of concern are not only the emissions of conventional pollutants from gas development, but the emissions of volatile organic compounds and nitric oxides, and hazardous air pollutants such as benzene, hydrogen sulfide, and toluene. Not mentioned so far is the emission of methane associated with the production and distribution of deep shale gas. Recent studies from Cornell and Carnegie Mellon universities show that flaring and fugitive emissions of methane for deep shale, sorry, deep shale gas may range from three to more than 6%. If the production of shale gas is allowed to accelerate without proper control of the methane emissions, the impact will be significant not just for climate change, but for the health of families and communities across the Marcellus Plain. These concerns are not imaginary. We have heard from our own members about uncontrolled emissions from gas activities. Unlike the northern tier counties of Pennsylvania, southwest Pennsylvania is densely populated. Gas wells, production, transportation, and storage facilities are close to residents. Families experience the effect of uncontrolled emissions. Among the gas emission complaints are flaring, which takes place at the com completion of wells. Another source of complaints are compressor stations, where unburned methane is emitted in the engine exhaust and from leaking valves and connections. These are not insurmountable problems, but they need to be forcibly addressed. 
Given the above concerns, we applaud the standards proposed by your agency to reduce air pollution from the shale gas industry. Standards that in a cost-effective manner and using best available practices are designed to, one, reduce emissions of smog-forming volatile organic compounds and air toxics, including the site carcinogen benzene, and two, reduce methane emissions from new and modified wells. We sincerely look forward to the proposed standards being adopted without any weakening, but with the full cooperation of the shale gas industry and with the strong support of President Obama. Thank you.